Hi friends, you're listening to episode 177. I cannot even believe it. How are we at episode 177? This is just insanity. Today we're chatting about what you're scared of when it comes to the ketogenic diet. We are overviewing cholesterol, inflammation, misconceptions about keto, and a whole whole bunch of other things. If you have questions about today's content, you can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me, and you can catch up on previous podcast episodes and notes from today's show by going to ketodietpodcast.com. That's where you're going to see all of the podcast episodes from episode one to now with all the links and resources and everything that I've mentioned in today's episode and beyond. I got one cool thing for you today. If you missed it, uh, I have announced that I'm going back on tour and I'm going to a bunch of cities, both in Canada and the U.S. So if you're Canadian or American and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to meet and take selfies and hang out, head on over to ketodietbook.com slash tour and see if I am going to your city. Now, if I'm not going to your city, it's not because I don't want to. It's just I don't have a ton of control over these things. I um, submitted a survey a while back and many of you submitted your cities that you'd like me to go to. So I selected the top, I think it was 15 cities that y'all voted for. And then we reached out to bookstores in those cities to see if they would have me. Some said yes, some didn't get back to me. So I did try my very hardest and whatever you see there is where I'm going. And hopefully in the future, I can get to all the places and we will get to meet sometime in the future. Okay, let's do this thing. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones and heal your body. Starting and maintaining keto can be challenging without the right support. So just for listening to the podcast, I want to give you 20% off the keto beginning with the coupon code keto podcast. That's all one word. This 30 day program gives you a clear step by step how to so you can quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles and get the results you crave. Go to healthfulpursuit.com slash begin to get your keto beginning discount today. If you're new around these parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international best-selling author of The Keto Diet, founder of HappyKetoBody.com, or maybe you know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks so much for listening. So today's recording is a little bit unique. I'm going to be sharing two separate recordings with you. Both of the recordings are from my virtual book tour that I did earlier this year, celebrating the launch of my book, The Keto Diet Cookbook, and also my book, Keto for Women. Now, you can get more details about those two books by going to ketodietbook.com. So we're going to start off with the conversation we had about fatty liver and cholesterol and its impact um, and whether keto affects fatty liver or causes fatty liver. And then in the other recording, we're going to be talking about inflammation. Now through the power of editing, hopefully this sounds completely seamless and awesome. And you can really delve deep on these topics. I think, you know, one of the major things as a consumer in the health industry is like, there's so much information being shared all over the place that I feel like I miss so many things. So I really enjoy when podcasters take content from other places and share it in a new way. And so I hope you're enjoying episodes where I'm sharing these things because not many people got to watch these recordings and join me live. I think there was maybe like 30 to 40 people. So I'm guessing you've never, ever heard this and you're going to get so much from it. I read from both books. I answer questions. I think you're really going to love it. And without further ado, let's cut over to these recordings. Hey guys, how's it going? We have Facebook up here. We got Instagram down here. I couldn't get YouTube live to get going today. And I'm just so, 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 so excited about today. So I just thought I would jump on and try to figure out later how to upload this to YouTube. Oh my goodness. Today is a very exciting day. Oh, I threw away the box. So I'll just show you. My book Keto for Women came in the mail. Oh oh gosh. How real. I wrote this. (laughs) it's a real thing. I made this. I also painted my nails to match the cover. So when I held it up like this, I was like, how perfect is this? Right? I planned this. (laughs) Hey, good afternoon, Kim. Hey, 119 Leather Co. 
Good morning, guys. I guess it's good afternoon. I'm so, so excited about this book more than any of my other books because there's like, I mean, all of my books have a lot of good information. I guess I'll show you if you're new around these parts and you're like, who is this lady? I got all my books behind here in these little baskets. It's so helpful. Hello, Holistic Ginger. So this is my first book. It came out in 2017. This is my second book. It came out April of 2019. And here's my third book. And it came out, uh, or it's coming out rather, June 18th, 2019, in less than a month. Okay, so I bet you're waiting for me to read to you. First, I have my little pen in here. I'm going to be talking about cholesterol and liver damage on keto. Sorry, coconut's just drinking. It's very hot outside. So I'll just open it up. Okay, page 56. Remember that, guys. Page 56, because I'm going to lose my place. I'm going to show you inside. Oh, there's me. There's me. I'm going to try to show you inside as best I can uh, so that you can see uh, all the graphics. I'm, I'm doing a horrible job here, but like, bear with me. All the graphics in there, all the information. There are no recipes in this book. It's all just information about how to adjust keto for your lady body. I have some cool food pyramids that give you some ideas about how to set up your fat field profile. There are lots of tables and charts and guides and graphics and food lists and quizzes and little worksheets. I mean, come on. Okay, there are, there's one recipe in here, the Rocket Fuel Latte, obvi, my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And we got little graphics here. Look at that. So instead of setting up recipes, what I've done is given you guys a little food pyramid and then showed you how to plug in those foods to basic meals. So I'm showing you how to make a shake, how to make a cold meal, a hot meal. And I know there's another one, I can't find it. Maybe it goes in and later, I can't remember. I'm so excited, I'm like vibrating. This is probably gonna be the worst video I've ever made because I'm just so excited. So it gives you a practical way to just put everything together. Little quizzes. Okay, so I chose a picture of me in my bathing suit with my belly out in the self-love body positivity section. And I was like excited for this and also terrified. So I'm really, really happy we ended up putting in there. I just, I really want to be real with you guys and open and honest about my experience, my body. And just, I think it's really important that we be open with each other because when we're open and we share our experiences, we find that all of us are really experiencing the same things. So it keeps on giving. Oh my goodness. A huge amount of work. Oh man. So much work. Okay. So then we get into the body balancing section and I have these little tabs at the top so you guys can follow along. So there's endocrine system. Oh, we passed a whole bunch. Lymphatic system, food intolerances, I'm doing like the worst job. Food sensitivities, inflammation reduction, autoimmune support. So there's a bunch of different sections in there. And then something that's different from my other books, it keeps on going. Like this whole section, this whole section right here is all hormones. So it's like a hundred pages on hormones and how to balance your hormones on a ketogenic diet. <laughs> so if you're just joining us, I'm showing you my newest book, Keto for Women. It comes out June 18th. Okay, so page 56. Let's chat about cholesterol and all the things I said that I was going to promise to share with you. Okay, page 57, actually. You excited? Back to today's episode in a sec. Get a healthy dose of fat with F-Bomb Nut Butter Packets filled with high-quality fats. Each single-serve packet is keto-friendly, no sugar, non-GMO, gluten-free, dairy-free, peanut-free, and vegan. And they won't blow up in your purse like the other packets that we've all tried. Just pure fats in an easy-tear packet. Listeners of the podcast get this exclusive epic deal that you won't want to miss. Buy any two 10-packs of F-Bomb Nut Butter Packets and get a free 10 pack of F bomb premium oil of your choice. Go to healthfulpursuit.com slash F bomb and use the code Leanne free. That's L E A N N E F R E E all in caps, no spaces to choose two nut butters, then get a free 10 pack of oil. Choose from MCT, olive, avocado, coconut, or macadamia nut oil. You'll love the convenience of taking healthful oils with you on the go. No more inflammatory oils on your takeout salads or warm meals. Just rip into one of the oil packets and away you go. 
Again, that's healthfulpursuit.com slash F-bomb and use the code Leanne free. Okay, back to today's episode. Okay, myth. So this is in a section called misconceptions and fears standing in your way. Myth, eating all those fats must cause liver damage. I actually get this question a whole bunch. There are two non-alcohol related liver problems in which fatty deposits accumulate in the liver. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic, I can never say this word, steatohepatitis. I, you know, um, some people are concerned that a high fat diet could contribute to those fatty deposits in the liver. So let's explore that. For fat deposits to form on the liver, all of these conditions must exist at the same time. Are you ready? One, the body is experiencing insulin resistance. See page 41 on what insulin resistance is if you're not sure. Two, fat burning is in full swing. Three, there's a high amount of inflammation in the body caused by decades of consuming inflammatory grains, sugars, dairy, and alcohol. Four, the body is under oxidative stress caused by decades of consuming vegetable oils and avoiding antioxidant rich foods. The following may play a role, cigarette smoke, uh, physiological stress, environmental toxins, shift work and chronic infections. Now I say shift work just because it means that you're adjusting your sleeping patterns and that your circadian rhythm is messed up. So I'm not saying that shift work is gonna give you liver damage like at all, that's not what I'm saying. You need those four things happening at the same time. On the keto diet, numbers one, three and four all improved. Though, of course, it takes time to heal damage. But after a few weeks on keto, the only one of these that should um, be in play is still number two, fat burning. In the absence of the others, fat deposits don't form on the liver. It's true that some studies indicate that saturated fat is associated with liver imbalances, but some studies show the opposite. In one study, participants ate a diet consisting of over 40% saturated fat and saw a significant improvement in liver fat deposits compared to participants on a low fat diet. So what gives? My guess is that when a study connects saturated fat consumption and liver imbalances, participants are consuming saturated fat from unhealthy sources. As sad as it makes me to admit, uh, not many people are proud of eating beef tallow. In the standard American diet, most saturated fats come from processed foods. Okay, so anytime I list a study in the book, it's going to be in the back of the book, separated out by sections. So you can see there's a weight loss section, there's a thyroid section, everyone can see that. Okay, another thing that I want to talk about, I was going to read from the cholesterol section, which is over here. Oh my god, I'm reading from my paperback book. Mind blown. Can't even believe it. This is my life. How is this even possible? I don't know. It's crazy. It blows my mind. Okay, myth. Keto increases your risk of heart disease. The fear that eating keto raises your risk of heart disease probably comes from a truth. Keto can raise your cholesterol, but that's far from the whole story. And in the end, a keto diet will actually make you less likely to get heart disease. But before we get into the truth about cholesterol, keto, and heart disease, here's a factoid to remember. The vast majority of the cholesterol in the body, about 80%, is actually made by the liver. What we ingest with our food is a paltry 20% of what's circulating. So adjusting your diet is generally going to have a fairly minimal effect on your cholesterol level. So basically I'm saying whatever you eat, it really won't have an effect because your body will just make more or less. Um, as soon as my husband gets home with the darn debit card, <laughs> I'll pre-order. Thanks, Chloe Rose. That's awesome. So if we can get 200 pre-orders over the next couple of days, I will get a Starbucks gift card. I'll take a screenshot. I'll, I'll share it on Instagram and you guys can uh, enjoy it. Okay. All about cholesterol. So here I'm going to give you a little lowdown on all the things about cholesterol. Now this continues to give for like four pages, so we probably won't get through the whole thing, but let's give it a whirl. Cholesterol has a bad reputation and that's so unfortunate because it's actually a pretty cool thing. Cholesterol is necessary for all body functions, including the production of bile, which in turn is essential for breaking down fat. Without cholesterol, white matter, which in insulates nerves and brain cells, cannot be produced. Cholesterol is also needed for the production, development, and healthy functioning of virtually every hormone in your body, including estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and even cortisol. As women, ensuring we have enough cholesterol is crucial for our overall health. So you can see why trying to lower your cholesterol could be dangerous. You got that? Yeah. 
mind blowing. Lowering cholesterol robs your body of the ability to perform many important processes such as processing of vitamin D, fat digestion and absorption, inflammation reduction, and nerve insulation. While we tend to refer to a singular cholesterol level, there are more things at play when it comes to how our cholesterol is transported and its potential risk to our health. You may have heard of HDL, the good cholesterol, and LDL, known as the bad cholesterol. HDL and LDL are, partic are actually not cholesterol themselves. They're molecules called lipoproteins that shuttle cholesterol all over the body. HDL is known as the better of these two lipoproteins because it carries cholesterol back to liver, which flushes it from the body. LDL, on the other hand, has the potential to cause damage. But before you start freaking out about your LDL level, know that there are actually two kinds of LDL cholesterol, and the type you have makes a big difference. Pattern A is large and fluffy, and pattern B is small and dense. Pattern B is the one that's dangerous. It's the one, it's the only kind that embeds itself into the walls of your arteries and in the presence of oxidative damage and inflammation causes plaque to form. Isn't this so fascinating? I feel like this could be the best story time book. <laughs> Eating plant-based processed oils like corn oil, soy oil, cottonseed oil does reduce LDL cholesterol, but this is because free radicals in the oils damage and break down the large fluffy LDL-A the kind that's not dangerous. The amount of small, dense LDLB actually increases, and so does the risk of heart disease. When you have your cholesterol measured in a blood test, the total cholesterol number represents LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, and other lipoproteins that carry cholesterol throughout the body. It is commonly accepted benchmark for heart disease risk. The lower the number the conventional thinking goes, the lower your risk. But it's better to get an NMR lipo profile test, which provides a full panel of cholesterol related measurements, including total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, HDL and triglycerides, as well as your lipo protein sizes. So further on, oh my gosh, there's just so much in this book. Kitty says, I love your books. Cannot wait to get my hands on your newest one on June 18th. I'm a busy lady and haven't been able to keep up with your meal plans. As outlined, I have a dumb, I have to dumb it down by having the same meals. That is okay, Kitty. That is totally fine. Dumb it down as much as you need. The resource will always be available to you. I go on and on and on about cholesterol, what to look for, what happens to your cholesterol and keto, the number of smaller denser LDLB particles decreases, HDL increases, triglycerides decrease, and all the things. I also talk about the truth behind heart disease and how to reduce your oxidative stress. So I'll share the oxidative stress stuff with you guys. Supplement with glutathione, one of the most powerful antioxidants. You can also find glutathione in apples, grapefruit, tomatoes. I can't remember any others right now. Avoid sugar, balance your blood sugar, meditate to reduce stress, avoid excess toxins, which we cover in page 312. Eat glutathione rich foods, walnuts, spinach, tomatoes, and asparagus. Well done, Leanne. Eat sulfur rich foods so you can produce your own glutathione. Sulfur rich foods include garlic, onions, avocados, and cruciferous vegetables. Consume antioxidant rich foods such as beets, kale, berries, tomatoes, nuts, seeds, green tea, cinnamon, ginger, and turmeric. So throughout the whole book, I have given you supplement recommendations, like a small portion of each piece as a supplement, but I really wanted to focus on super healing foods because I find that foods are so much easier to incorporate than having you take a supplement every day. I've done the whole supplement thing. It didn't work out for me at all. And I'm guessing because we're very similar in a lot of ways that you'll feel the exact same way. So yeah, that is cholesterol and, and liver stuff. It goes on like how sugar causes inflammation, uh, how to test for inflammation. And this is just a small segment of the myths inside Keto for Women. I've separated the myths into myths around setting up your ketogenic diet, myths around the health impact of the ketogenic diet. And I know there's another one, setting it up, health. There's one more. Oh, right. Weight loss. Weight loss myths on the ketogenic diet. So hopefully I'll get to read for you a bunch of times over the coming days. I'll be sharing all of these videos over on my page, over on healthfulpursuit.com, my blog. So if you miss any of them, I'll be sharing the link with you if you are on my newsletter list. And I'm just so, so, so excited. Look at that. How crazy is this, guys? That's amazing. 
I did this for all of you. It's like a little, it's a sequel, really. You read the orange one, then you move on to the turquoise one, and then you read the pink one, and hopefully you're set for life, at least when it comes to keto and what I have to share. Oh, these are heavy. Uh, it's crazy. All this stuff is in my brain. That's cool. Thanks again for joining me. This is what the book's going to look like. If you've already pre-ordered, thank you so much. And if you haven't already, the time is now, bud. Like, just do it. And I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. Okay, bye. I hope you're totally digging this episode. I love putting these together every week and I hope you're getting something out of it. I love seeing where you're listening from. So next time you're listening or even right now, take a picture of yourself watching the show or a screenshot of your favorite episode and tag me on Instagram at healthful pursuit. And if social isn't your thing, that's totally fine. Just jump on your favorite podcast player and leave a review for the show. Okay, back to the good stuff. Because I always like to make my content as available as possible to everyone. Some of you are on Facebook, some of you are on Instagram, some of you are on YouTube and the podcast. So I try to share it in as many places as possible so you don't have to change your patterns in order to access my content. So as I said earlier, we're going to be chatting all about inflammation. I'm going to be reading from my newest book, Keto for Women. Okay, I'm going to see what you guys are saying. All working from here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sometimes Instagram works, sometimes Facebook works, sometimes YouTube works. It's just a cluster. Okay, I'm keto. What inflammation? <laughs> Very good question. So a lot of us start to have issues. Well, a lot of us have inflammation just by the foods we eat, the lifestyle we have. And when we go keto, sometimes it gets worse. Usually it should get better. Getting ready to also order cookbook. What's the consensus on spiro? spiral bound seems handy. I have no idea how this option is available because it's not actually. I feel like people did it and then are selling their books. I have no idea how it works. So I can't say on the quality or anything. But yeah, sounds super handy. I wish all cookbooks came spiral bound. Can you get perfect keto ship to Canada? You can. I have many times. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna read to you. Now I used... I use my Keto Man as a bookmark. Hey, it's not just a snack. It's a great bookmark. And when you get hungry while you're reading, come on. I wasn't paid to say that. I'm just saying it's great. Okay, so I'm reading from page 251 of the book. This is a, what did we end up at? 416? A 416 page book. It's all words and graphics. There are no technical recipes in here, but I do show you how to cook just by throwing things together instead of carrying a whole bunch and stressing yourself out about it. So it's going to be good. So this is in the inflammation reduction section. There are about eight pages. I don't know if we're going to get through all of them, but we'll definitely try and see how far we can go. Inflammation has a bad reputation, but it's not all bad. In fact, it's necessary for life. When you bang your knee or when bacteria or a virus enters your body, inflammation is called to the site thanks to your immune system bathing the area in fluids, proteins, and blood. This process creates swelling and heat to protect and repair the damage and encourage healing. This is a healthy inflammatory response. An unhealthy inflammatory response is when inflammation becomes chronic, when that short-term heat and swelling becomes long-term, producing a steady, low-grade inflammation. It ultimately contributes to the development of disease. Why does this happen? In part, it's due to an overactive immune system that initiates inflammation even when there is nothing to heal. I love all the hearts. Keep it going, guys. All the colors. The body keeps reacting to what it thinks is a problem, never shutting itself off. So in each of the sections where I talk about a health imbalance inside my newest book, Keto for Women, if you're just joining, that's what I'm reading from, I give a how to test it section. So it, it outlines a uh, blood test, urine test, stool test, saliva tests that you can take if you want to go the next step to discovering what your body's reacting to. And it outlines exactly what to test for. So in here, I talk about the HSCRP test, which is a test that measures CRP in the blood to detect inflammation. And also what might be helpful if you think you might be dealing with inflammation is a, a homocysteine test. And that to indicates the levels that can levels that can indicate whether your body is undergoing a healthy amount of methylation, a process that influences your brain, hormones, immune system, and gut. If homocysteine is 
imbalanced, it could be a sign of increased inflammation. June 18th can't come fast enough. And if you guys haven't heard yet, I'm going on tour. So I'm gonna be going on tour at the end of August through September. So if you head on over to my Facebook page, Healthful Pursuit, or my Instagram stories, I've given you a way to um, submit where you're from and where you think I should go. So if you haven't already submitted your response, please do that. I need all the responses by Monday and then I'm gonna meet you guys in real life. I'm so excited to be able to make this happen. Um, and September should be a very good month. I'm real, I didn't think this would happen. So it's just a very nice surprise. Okay, I got some questions on Facebook. So we're just gonna, exciting Bobby says, okay, awesome. Today is my birthday. Oh, and June 18th was my mom's birthday. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Okay, many of us think of inflammation as a contained reaction or situation when in reality it affects every part of our body. Inflammation plays a role in autoimmune conditions, cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, and more. That's why we should care about our inflammation levels or inflammatory levels, inflammation levels. You know what I'm saying. It can be triggered by various factors, but the most interesting of all factors is fat cells, which can trigger a steady release of substances that attack healthy nerves, organs, and tissues when there is no actual invader to attack. As we gain weight, more of these substances are released, affecting our body's ability to use insulin and sometimes lead to type 2 diabetes. This same reaction can have an effect on our hormones, possibly leading to amenorrhea or low testosterone, and can cause impaired memory and cognition, depression, suppressed immune function, and pain. Now, earlier on in the book, I think it's in like the 50s, I talk about brown adipose fat tissue and how it's a little bit different. And so there are different types of fat, and I'm not saying that all fat is bad fat. Zen Master, I have trigger finger in three of my fingers. Is this an inflammatory issue? It is. I actually uh, deal with the same thing. Whenever I eat something imbalanced, my body reacts by making this finger hurt a whole bunch the only thing that makes it really bad is like soy oil specifically canola oil those are about the two like especially if things are fried in soy oil it's like game over for me okay signs you have too much inflammation i'm just going to show you this graphic and then i'll read from it so this is the one that i'm referring to so we have allergies asthma autoimmunity chronic diseases such as diabetes cancer alzheimer's autoimmune disease Depression, digestive issues, headaches, heart disease, high cholesterol, joint pain, diseases, inflammation is related to basically all of them, <laughs> all of them. So then we get into the section. So each, each of the sections that I've outlined as common things that women deal with, it starts off with autoimmune support, goes into inflammation support, gut support, candida support, food sensitivity and allergy support, food intolerances, gallbladder, lymphatic system, cardiovascular system, nervous system, keeps on giving. So in each of these sections, I've outlined what it is, your diet adjustments, your additional adjustments, and supportive supplements that you can take. So that's what's outlined. Is an endocrinologist a specialized doctor to consult for this? For inflammation, no, no. An endocrinologist can help you with your hormones, I haven't known of a conventional doctor to be up to date on inflammation and the causes or the effects that it has on the body. But if anyone knows of a doctor that's like really in it on inflammation and understands that it's a huge factor in many of our um, health issues, let me know. Comment. I would love to know. Back to today's episode in a sec. If you're not familiar with Paleo Valley, they make one of my most favorite healthful keto snacks, 100% grass-fed beef sticks and 100% pasture-raised turkey sticks, and they are also fermented. Each stick contains 1 billion CFUs of probiotics to benefit the health of your gut and strengthen your immune system. Their gut-friendly sticks are gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, free chemical, additive, and dye-free, as well as being preservative-free. Many of the flavors are 100% free 
free from carbohydrates. And the best part, they're really, really tasty. Now you can shop all things Paleo Valley, load up your cart and apply a 20% discount code to everything in your cart. To take advantage of this offer, go to paleovalley.com slash keto, fill up your cart and enter the coupon code keto20. That's keto20 at checkout to apply a 20% off discount on your entire purchase. If you're unsure of the link, simply check out today's show notes for all the details. Okay, back to today's episode. So diet adjustments. If you have signs of inflammation, you've tested for inflammation, you're like, oh, thank God I got inflammation. Thankfully, the ketogenic diet is in and of itself an anti-inflammatory diet. So following the three steps to fat fueled freedom on pages 81 to 2013, there's a lot in there, will do wonders for reducing inflammation. However, if you find inflammation is still lingering after you've become fat adapted, here are some additional dietary adjustments that you can make. Supplement with exogenous ketones. This can be really helpful if you're having a massive inflammatory problem, like when my scalp really reacts with my psoriasis, I take a ton of exogenous ketones and it really helps reduce the inflammation on my scalp. If you don't already follow it, switch to the classic keto fat fuel profile outlined on page 199. Fast more often and drink green tea in the morning during your fasts. You can see page 138 for more on fasting. Have hot water with lemon and fresh ginger before bed. Spend 10 to 20 minutes in an infrared sauna two to three times per week. I'm trying a new handheld red light um, sauna situation. I've been doing it now for five days and I'll have a review up on the blog next month after I've tried it for 30 days. So that could be also really helpful. If you're dealing with inflammation, you can just put it right on the source. It starts at $200, this little handheld thing, and you can travel with it. I'm pretty impressed with it so far, but I'll let you guys know what I decide in 30 days. In regards to um, the doctor situation, I agree with you, Key Life. Uh, more Eastern acupuncture medicine, I couldn't agree with you more. You're going to find way more support going that route, specifically acupuncture with inflammation. I've had the same experience, so I agree with you. Congratulations on the tour, says Julie. How about Canada? I'm definitely going to Canada. It's my home country. I'm going there. Yes, definitely go check out my stories. I'm also going to be sending out a newsletter on Sunday with a link to the survey. If you're on my newsletter list and you get little messages from me, be sure to watch for that. Definitely going to Calgary. If you live in Calgary, I will be there. I will be there. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Okay, then I get into the healing foods. So Keto for Women has an interesting concept in it, something I've used with my clients for quite some time but never shared in any of my books because I try to keep all of them original and awesome. I outline a little food pyramid, and then throughout the whole book, I show you how the different adjustments for imbalances lay into that pyramid. So while the basic pyramid may tell you that spices to enjoy are all of them, if you have an inflammation issue, then you're going to want to focus on certain spices to help with your inflammation. Now, I do offer some supplement support, but I really find that adding food to your eating style is the best course of action because it's the easiest to incorporate. Fasting will also help with your inflammation. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Are you coming to Dallas? If you tell me I should come to Dallas, I will come to Dallas. There's a little um, survey that you can fill out in my stories. I'll also be adding it into my profile. You can also see it on Facebook. I'll also be sending you an email on Sunday if you're on my newsletter list so that you can submit the survey. And basically, wherever you guys tell me to go is where I'm going to go except Calgary. I'm going there regardless because I just, that's my hometown and I need to go there. Um, so some of the ultra healing foods, if you're experiencing inflammation, include the extras. So the extras are things like spices, condiments, that sort of thing. So you have garlic powder, black pepper, cinnamon, coriander, cumin, turmeric, sage, thyme, rosemary, dill weed, basil, a whole list there. Then you have your starches and fruits. Now, the fruits may contain excess levels of carbohydrates. Now, this is just regarding uh, people who do carb ups, which I explain in this book in a bunch of detail that's different than the detail that I share in my first book. Okay, so a little bit different. Also, I, I thoroughly enjoy looking at the difference between the pictures on these covers. Yeah, it's really fun. If you see them all at a bookstore, just look. It's, it's, a, it's a fun progression between a couple of years to see. 
So starches and fruits include blueberry, cranberry, lemon, and papaya, also great for inflammation. Protein is going to include chia seeds, hemp seeds, salmon, sardines, and walnuts. Non-starchy vegetables are broccoli, celery, red cabbage, and healthy fats are going to be avocados, chia seeds, and flax seeds. So chia seeds are one of those things where like if you're vegan, you're going to consider it to be a protein. If you're not, you're probably going to consider it a healthy fat. So I like to make sure that I'm including all sources of all things to try to include as many people as possible, including the vegans and the vegetarians of the world, because they need stuff too. Peggy on Facebook says, I can't wait for your new book, Excited from Washington. Uh, is this new book appropriate for those who are postmenopausal by a lot of years? So no sex hormone issues. Yeah, I have a whole section in here about um, postmenopause, menopause, perimenopause, all the things. And regardless, if you are 20 or 60 or 70 or 80 or whatever age you're at, you are, rather, a lot of this stuff has nothing to do with relying on balanced hormones or um, caring about hormones to follow this book, if that makes sense. Okay, so and then at the base of each of the ultra healing foods, I say water, like always water, drink water. Okay, shifting it back. Now we have additional adjustments. So I'll read from there. And if you guys have questions, feel free to post them. I will answer them as I go. I think coffee might be the cause for my inflammation. Could be try switching to green tea. It can be um, helpful. Also, um, Earl Grey tea can be helpful. And you might want to try a decaf coffee and see if it's the caffeine in the coffee that's causing the inflammation or the coffee itself. It could also be the source of coffee. So if you really, if you really love coffee and you can't imagine your life without it, a good uh, step you can take is try decaf, see if it's helpful, or try switching up the type of coffee that you're drinking because it could just be the coffee that you're drinking. Is your next book going to be an autobiography? Good question. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm excited to get this book. Um, how do you measure or feel inflammation? We talked about that a little bit earlier. There is a section in here that says how to test for it and signs that you could have it. Um, the HSCRP test and the homocysteine test is usually the best if you want to go with like actual scientific data, which I really like. Like, I'm all cool for like adjusting my food and seeing how things go and if things improve, awesome. But if I'm feeling really lost and I don't know which way is up or down and I'm just really frustrated, the numbers tell all. And they're just a, so much, a much better way of assessing what's actually happening here in your body than guessing. And if you do have access to tests, I always, always recommend just getting a test so that you know what's going on with your body. Okay, additional adjustments. Saying yes to discovering your food sensitivities and allergies, that's a big part to discovering what's causing inflammation, like we just talked about the coffee. Uh, when you eat foods that you're sensitive to, the gut becomes inflamed, which can exacerbate leaky gut issues. See page 243. Follow the elimination protocol on page 277 to determine which foods you might be sensitive to. If you're just joining us, I'm reading from my newest book, Keto for Women. You can find all the details by going to ketoforwomen.com. Healing your gut. Inflammation often goes hand in hand with leaky gut. See page 243. So healing your gut can help reduce inflammation. If you find that your gut needs additional support, follow the advice in the gut support section on page 256 in conjunction with this section. So the two are very um, linked. Moving your body. Inactivity causes inflammation. Living a sedentary life causes elevations in inflammatory substances and C-reactive protein. That's that CRP that we were talking about, which is associated with inflammation and negatively affect, um, impacts every organ in the body, particularly the heart. So if you hate working out, that's okay. You don't need to like go to the gym or get a membership or pay a lot of money. Just go outside, go for a walk, go for a walk in the morning, go for a walk at lunch, go for a walk in the evening. I don't care. Just move your body. You know what I do when I'm driving long distances and I haven't moved my body for a while? I crank up the tunes and I'm like dancing as I drive. You can pull over. You can do a little dance for five minutes. Just anything. Move your body. I don't care what it is. And you don't you don't need money to do it. And I think a lot of us get like stuck on the whole like I need a cute outfit to go to the gym and I need all these things before I do it or I need to lose weight before I go to the gym. Nobody cares. Just get there, move your body because at the end of the day, the only one who's suffering by not moving your body is you, <laughs> right? And it's just not worth it. 
Okay, high quality foods. Poor quality foods such as conventionally raised beef, dairy, poultry, and eggs can increase inflammation due to the imbalance of omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. Oh, I wish I had. Hey, Kevin, do you want to grab the krill oil in the snack cupboard? It's like um, pink. And it's in the top left drawer or um, shelf. I'll show you guys the oil that I use to balance out my omega threes. So with the power of television, top shelf, left side, pink bottle, and it's black. Dun dun dun. dun. <laughs> so this is a supplement I use from Perfect Keto. It's called Keto Krill. It's really really rich in omega threes. So I supplement with this just to help with inflammation, especially when this finger starts doing funky things. I know to take more of it. And why is it keto krill? Like it's just krill oil? Well, it's not. There's MCT in here. So if you, it's MCT oil. Yeah, so if you're like disaster pants crazy with MCT oil, I wouldn't recommend this product. But if you take a little bit of MCT oil and you're fine and your gut's okay, this stuff. Okay, moving on. Also avoid high processed foods like conventional hot dogs and sausages. And although sugar is already out on strict keto, if you're practicing cyclical ketosis, make sure to choose healthier carbs. I'll leave that to you. Disaster pants. You know what I'm talking about, girl. It happens to the best of us. Uh, daily stress reduction. Chronic stress increases systemic inflammation. Yoga, meditation, breathing exercises, qigong, tai chi have all been scientifically proven to reduce stress and inflammation. If none of these feel right to you, find a self-care practice that does. Maybe an unhurried walk in nature or just sitting alone with headphones on listening to your favorite music. I do this a lot. This is like my self-care constantly it's just like sitting with my big headphones where are my big headphones oh these bad boys i bought them for myself for christmas i love them they're the bose headphones did i say that right bose boss boss bose i put these bad boys on noise canceling and i just sit there with some good music i highly recommend trevor hall uh, for women, inflammation is more of a problem postmenopausally due to lower levels of protective estrogen. This is one of those things like our culture tells us that we shouldn't have high estrogen because it causes cancer and all the things. But if we don't have enough, we're going to deal with inflammation, which causes cancer. So it's always just like, seriously, which one is it, guys? And I think it's really about just like leading with what makes you feel good and listening to your body is really the key. So then we get into the additional adjustments saying no to. And guys, I promise we're almost done. I just want to give you as much uh, support with this. We have like one page left. Dairy, if you're dealing with high levels of inflammation, it's best to avoid all dairy products completely until you've determined whether dairy is safe for your body through the methods described on page 277. Overtraining, exercise is essential to a healthy life, but it can be overdone. Overtraining can cause a de a depletion in the amino acid glutamine, which is essential for a healthy immune response. Overtraining also causes an increase in inflammatory substances. Athletes who overtrain tend to have high inflammation and may experience chronic infections, depression, fatigue, irritability, digestive disturbances, and flu-like symptoms. If you are training for a competitive sport or like to exercise for over an hour a day, please be mindful of these possible outcomes. Uh, Natra 3, keto improves my skin, no acne anymore, but if I cheat on keto, I have inflammation. Is it normal? Yeah, it is normal. So if you're going to, I hate the word cheat. Can we just say, if you're going to eat things that are different than your daily things, <laughs> just be mindful of what gives you inflammation and what doesn't. It's not like an all or nothing thing where like you can't go off plan and like all of a sudden you have inflammation and you feel like hot garbage. There have to be foods that will make you feel good. And it's just about determining which ones make you feel good and which ones don't. And I can just about guarantee that there are non-keto things that make you feel pretty good. Sugar and refined carbs. If you're practicing carb ups or any other kind of cyclical keto, sugar and refined carbs may spike your insulin and blood sugar, weight gain, uh, cause weight gain and increase in free radicals, all of which increase inflammation. High blood sugar and high inflammation both trigger the release of inflammatory substances. Now, um, just because I just want to preface this as an, a side piece, just because there are foods that cause a spike in blood sugar in some, it might not cause in others. Like I can get away with eating quite a lot of carbs now that my metabolism is much better than it was when I started keto. And so I'm not having that inflammation reaction because my blood sugar isn't spiking up and I'm not having the same reaction that I did before. So definitely keep that in mind so you can live your best life. Alcohol can trigger chronic inflammation because of its effect on the lining of the gut, which allows bacteria to pass through the gut lining and cause inflammation. 
Omega-6 rich foods say no to these bad boys. Conventionally raised beef and dairy have higher have a higher ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, making them more pro-inflammatory. Conventionally raised poultry and eggs, as well as nuts and seeds, also contain high amounts of omega-6 fatty acids. Avoid these foods if you're already dealing with high inflammation. So if you're like an inflammatory bomb and you're just trying to like get things out of like in control it might be best to avoid the high omega-6 foods even though they're quote unquote healthy because they're just not good for your body right now and that's why nutrition is so individual and that there isn't just one list that everyone can follow because we're all coming at it from a different angle and we all require something a little bit different okay last section is supportive supplements those include vitamin c d and e Herbs and plants, including curcumin, boswellia, willow bark, and cycolinogel. I can never say this. Synodge. See? I have moments too. I think I just call it no Janelle, but I know that's not right. So here's what it looks like. <laughs> right there, where are my fingers? If anyone knows how to say that word properly, please let me know because I never know and I always struggle with it. Okay, not all of us can be like smart and stuff. Um, others, MSM, glucosamine, uh, chondroitin, plant enzymes, omega-3 fatty acids, alpha-lipoic acid, grapeseed extract, green tea extract, and NAC. So those are sub some of the supplements you can uh, go with. You do not have to. That's why I recommend a bunch of actions, lifestyle actions, healing foods, what it all is. Um, Oh my gosh, this is like the best textbook for just living your best life. I just, I'm just so happy about this book. I'm going to tab this so I don't do this video again in the future throughout these virtual book readings. Yeah, so if you just joined us and you didn't know what the heck I was saying, this is Keto for Women. It's my newest book that comes out June 18th. And I will add the survey on my Instagram so you guys can enter that or just go to my stories. Let me know where you're from and if you'd like me to come to your city in the US or Canada, we will make it happen. I will see you in September. So exciting. Um, but I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to try to do another live this weekend. Maybe we'll do like a Q&A. That'd be fun. So get your questions ready and I will see you soon. Bye guys. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.